You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes. Yamanika Sanders. Yamanika. Yes, Saunders. 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 Or just Yamanika. Yamanika. Yes. Well, Hi, guys. What do you call you for short growing up? Uh, Yami. Yami. Yams. <laughs> Which is why I'm so glad like yams is popular because like I, love yams. I feel like people calling me all the time. I love yams. I feel like I'm eating too much yams. <laughs> well, obviously I eat a lot of yams. <laughs> okay, so yes, now, thanks for having me. I saw you on Instagram speaking of eating. You was eating pig's blood ice cream. Yes. Oh my why? god. I was in what LA. Is that? There's a place called uh, Salt and Straw. Oh, I went there when I was in LA. Amazing. Oh my As a matter of fact, you yes. gave them Donkey of the Day when I was there. They were bringing that up to me. What did I give them Donkey of the Day for? For I selling remember, stuff like pig's blood ice cream? <laughs> I well, can't remember why you did, but they were like, Charlemagne gave us Donkey of the Day. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Well, what, I mean. What is pig's it, blood ice cream? It, you know, I didn't even taste the blood. I wanted to taste like, you'd think it would be like, like a nickel kind of taste. It was just, it was just delicious. I don't know. I'm also a big girl. So maybe just anything tastes good to me. Okay. Ask a skinny girl if she can taste the blood because I just taste heaven. <laughs> it's 2018. People not even eating pork. Why would you want to eat pig Who blood? not eating pork? <laughs> I'm with you. Who not eating Who pork? Not eating pork? I'm not eating pork. pork. I'm eating pork. <laughs> you still There's eat pork? a ban on pork? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, okay, okay. If it's a meat and I could put it in a frying pan, I'm <laughs> eating it. No matter what the animal is? I don't care what it is. I just tried pig's blood. <laughs> I'm telling right you right now, if, if they had, like, alligator hoof, I would definitely try that. No, that's good. Gator's good. Gator meat is good. Oh, you tried it? Yeah, I've had gator meat. I'm from the South. And you South got the nerve to turn your nose up at pig, pig, right? Pig. But he's... <laughs> Have you ever seen how a pig lives? See, when you, when I was raised around pigs, so you see how a pig live. Pigs eat anything, including their own feces. But well, I, I, I think mean, a lot of animals have nasty eating habits. Not sure. like a pig. Sure, and my apartment's nasty, Chickens. and I still get a guy eat me out. So hey. you know what I'm saying. You now, know what I'm saying. You are so like. <laughs> just I'm like trying not to smile because I ain't got no teeth in my mouth on the side because you know I ain't made no money yet like that. that. Um, they fell out one day, and I'm just trying to get enough gigs to get them back. Her teeth did not fall out. I'm looking. They I did. They're look at right here. Oh, okay, I see yeah, one missing. You know, you know, there's another one. It's a well, matching they, they set. Just, they just regular. They fell out. Normally? They fell out. And um, I haven't put them back in, so like the space is kind of closing in. It's like yeah. you know the gap band. So yeah, fake teeth in there. No, they have nothing in there, just air and prayer. Mm -hmm. But before, <laughs> when they <laughs> fell out, it was your real teeth or the fake? Yeah, teeth? my real teeth. See, I used to have a tongue ring, so you know people who had tongue rings, you start chewing and stuff like that. It hits the tooth, they start to crack, blase they skip. Yeah. You don't pay attention, and then... you get older. Boom, you out. I always think people with tongue rings are automatically kind of freaky. Well, Absolutely. I'm a Scorpio, so I'm a double freak. Oh, my God. You know Scorpio. what I'm saying? That was yeah. a stereotype with the tongue rings. Yeah. I think that, though. You think it's a stereotype? <laughs> Why you look at me like because that? Because I was, I definitely got that tongue ring for a reason. Hey, what, 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 what was, was the reason? reason? Well, no, 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 no. What listen, was the reason, Yummy? I, listen, these people don't know <laughs> me like that. Let me, I got to creep out slowly, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to tell all my stuff. I always say to a man like this, if you can lift up my gut and find something there, you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> so what else is going on? You now, just like the rest of us is in this room, all of us, yes. um, you like to get dick pics. Oh, I love them. First of all, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Wait, like, throw that out no, no, there. ain't no rest of us in this room. All right, you like to get dick pics. Angela. She has her own email. So for yeah, so you I, do. I have an email. It's pretty dick swag at Gmail, and there's yes. a, all penises in there. And some penis pictures are beautiful, and some are not. Right. Right. So what makes a penis picture unattractive? Well, you know, just men don't put Tell the me same. This first or you want to <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, I'm sorry. Men don't put the same type of effort in a penis picture. You understand? Like women, when we take our pictures, we want to look sexy. We start to, you know, especially with big girls, you got to get the stick, put it way up so you look like Beyonce. You know what I'm saying? You got to make sure the thigh meat is like right and out the way. You got to lift up the gut, push the breast back, pushing the scoop them together, do all of this stuff. That's catfishing, the right, though. Go, you know, you got to do all but of that. That's really her. That's not catfishing. It's I mean, it's angle. really me. Yeah. If you if you have sex with me like this, that's really me. You right. understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so like, you just got to get me in the right position for me to be a size six. Got you. But men just haphazardly, I think, like, when a woman says, I want a, uh, a dick pic from you, he just goes, okay, I'm going to take a pic, boop, and just be taking it on right. the toilet. I've gotten so many haphazard walking through the park. Why are you taking a dick pic you walking through the park? Or a dirty bathroom in, like, a gas station. Yes! Just or with their feet in it. Like, that's Photoshop disgusting. your like penises. It. We want to see some good things, too. I put flowers Get around my angles. vagina. All kinds of stuff. Like, just try. Don't shame the person taking it in the gas station, though, because he's doing that because he doesn't know how bad you need this dick pic right now. 
So he's just taking it nah, anywhere. Nah, nah, nah. nah. what's he doing nah, in the gas station? We don't want to see the dirty gas toilet station. underneath. Yes. Yes. <laughs> what we in New York? Who getting gas like that? Okay, you got a point. That's a fact. Yeah, you know, I be thinking like you might I, be in Jersey. You no, know, because that makes me wonder about why are you doing things that are not like supposed to be happening right now. Mm-hmm. You know, you go to a gas station because you got a real wife at home and you don't want her to see you taking a dick pic. So you want to go to the Exxon and throw me some trash and then go back to your wife. That's I don't think fact. so. That's true. That's, That's true. True. what happens. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, cool. It, 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 girls is having sex with married guys nowadays. No, we are not. I mean, some maybe some women. I'm not. But black men don't cheat. Black men definitely don't cheat. So how are women having sex with married men? Honey, that's a damn lie. What? <laughs> what? Y'all cheat so much, it was extra people being added to Wakanda as I was watching the damn movie. I said, look at them cheating so that... What are you talking Honey, about? Honey, you know what I'm talking about. No, we don't. Black men don't cheat. Black men cheat. Then you how cheat can women sleep with married men if black men don't cheat? I didn't say what black kind of men. men listen, See, but you, I'm... You just assuming they black. Yeah, you just assuming they I black. I said men. So there's no... Okay. You said black men. No, nope. I said married men. I said women don't have a problem sleeping with married men. Okay, I said that was false, and then you said black men don't yeah, cheat. Yeah, yes. we black just wanted men. to throw that disclaimer out there just because. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I love me a good black man, but black I mean, I'm lie. not going to say that black men don't <laughs> cheat. You understand? It's, it's and I know it's narrative. hard out there for y'all to not cheat and be faithful. We not were just me. talking about this no, outside. I'm good. What'd that mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. My wedding okay. ring. First of all, your your wife is gorgeous, okay? And I'm not going to throw y'all out there because, mm-hmm. I, you know, my career is very low on the ground, all right? <laughs> so I'm not going to... I know where I'm, my bread is being buttered, okay? <laughs> by me and also by y'all. But there are <laughs> men... <laughs> There are men that are cheating out there. I'm, I don't, I don't even hard. know why you're even addressing this. This is just something. It's just you and I, Tom. We should yeah. just talk and just be yeah. keeping it real. Well, here's the thing. As a man, you live and you learn. Okay? Mm-hmm. So, yes, we've made some mistakes, but we're changing the narrative now. Evolution. Evolution. Black men don't cheat no more. That's old school. That's whack. That's played out. We and you know what's crazy? That. Women have never cheated. Black women have never cheated. Never. Yeah. We're so loyal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> loyal. That's we right. sit there and watch y'all pick up these basic fat white women and go, that's all right, Tyrone. <laughs> come right back and we've been waiting and I'm telling you black women get out there and start getting with these white men I had a white man eat me out two weeks ago yes really he ate me Why out so good like no 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 wait hold on a second he ate me out so good I was like I don't even know if black lives really matter anymore oh, you know what I'm saying? so like diversify your portfolio I still love black men but I'm not gonna sit here and keep waiting for one to come from damn heaven okay mm-hmm. I may have to get with a Chad or a damn whoever Dan uh, Dan Billy. <laughs> when, I, when I said I black know. men don't cheat, you had that look like, as soon as I start fucking with white boys, y'all stop cheating? <laughs> well, I mean, listen, I didn't stop. I love I love everything about a black man. I love the way they smell, they look, they swag, they cheating. But, <laughs> you know, like, if I want to, if I, you know, I, as a comic, because first of all, does people even know I'm a comic? Do, did y'all intro me at all? I'm, I'm trying sorry, to y'all, stuff. Like, Let's bad. go, God okay? I'm, I'm trying sorry. to be the next Tiffany Haddish. I'll be, forget- I mean, I mean, I be forgetting when okay. I know people, I think everybody else Thank knows. Thank you. They're like, who the hell is this fat girl with this fucking... Yamanika is a comic. A comedian. Okay? She's been on the Jim Gaffigan show, Comedy Central's Don't read the whole bio. True TV shows, Comedy Knockout and Friends. Yes. She got her Netflix special, Degenerates, out right now. Yes, she does. Netflix special, The Degenerates, a former panelist on The Merit of Year. So I'm just giving them some backstory before we get to the new stuff, all yes. right? And uh, she's dope. I think she's hilarious. Thank you. I really appreciate we did, that. We did Smart, Funny, and Black together. Yes, we had a ball. Yes, with Amanda Seals. That mm-hmm. was great. And Charlamagne, like, Charlamagne is such a good person. Such a sweetheart. We he doesn't cheat. Such a gentleman. He'll give you money if you need it. I could tell you no, he's just bread butter. No, I'm telling you this, honestly. <laughs> I just think you're just such a dope well, person, such you. a nice person. I appreciate that. I don't know why you get so much flack. Uh, perception sometimes. But I mean, I can't even be mad at that because it depends. You might have seen something from me that you didn't like or heard something from me that you didn't like. That wasn't and then you nice. run with that, you know? Well, that we live in a world where everything's too. out of context. Yeah, that's yeah. sure. People don't understand, like, certain things come up. And, you know, definitely with my comedy because it's definitely here and there. And I think sometimes when people see me, especially as, like, a big black woman, they expect certain things. I'm very bold and confident in what I, what I do in my comedy. I've been doing it for a long time, and it is a long hustle. And I'm very proud of myself because, you know, I have I moved here almost 18 years ago from California, but I'm originally from Maryland. And it's just been hustle, hustle, hustle. I've worked really, really hard. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, you know, had to push myself in the spots. I got booed on Showtime at the Apollo. Oh, my you got God. got booed at the Apollo? Oh, they what? booed what me so bad. Okay, so. <laughs> Where can we see this footage? 
please go find it. I need to go look for it too because it. You know what it is. I think when people fail and we try to distance ourselves from the fail, but that really changed the dynamic of who I was as a person. I decided to do um, the amateur hour. Mm -hmm. This is when uh, Monique was uh, actually the hosting host? it. Okay. Yeah, she was the host, and I was just and my mother said, "Don't." Don't go up there. Why? She was like, because, you know, she we, wa we watch the show. We know what, you know, they mm -hmm. ready to boo. And, like, you don't, it's comedy is the kind of thing that I think people expect you right away to just jump they into it. The time they don't give you the time, but it. it's a conversation. It's a connection between you and the crowd. You got to feel me. I got to feel you. You got to know me. I got to know you. And you right. got to start to trust me. So you got, like, literally three minutes you go up there. I came out there looking like a nerd. You know, I had some tight pin curls because I was still, you know, very, very saved. <laughs> um, I had a flower thing on. I came. I remember walking out. My I don't think she pronounced my name right. People were like, "Who? Yama? What? What's going on?" And I my first joke was something about you know everybody got roaches. I don't know. I was just trying to relate to them. It was Harlem. <laughs> and um, but I grew up in an upper middle class family from Maryland, so I don't really know about roaches. Yeah, like to be funny. honest, with yeah. you, so I'm just playing. You know, part of it was me not being real with myself. Right. Uh -huh. So I just said roaches. They didn't feel the authenticity from yeah. me, and they just started booing. Now let me tell you, one of the most painful things in the world is to see a bunch of black people booing you. I was like, my God, my people hate me. They and hate me. New York me. City. Different, oh, especially in it, Apollo. It, it That's comes different. from the toes, not even the soles, <laughs> like the toes, and then it curls up, and then like, and, and they was calling people at their house. Hey, just start booing up on one forty fifth. Yeah, <laughs> this is bitch over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to get out. So it was like, and 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 then I remember I was so disoriented. I didn't know what to do. I was just like, my heart was breaking. And I remember they said, don't walk this way because this way is for winners. Then losers got to go that way. Damn. And I walked this way to the winners. To the winners. And do you know they made me walk back over? No. And, and I said, no. I said, no, I don't have to. Listen, me stay here forever. I don't want to. So they were like, no, you got to go back. So when I walked back over, they booed me as I walked back no. over the stage. I said, what? <laughs> what? what's going on? So I'm a good Christian girl from Maryland. Why would you do this to me? And What year was this? Um, I, Let me see. I don't get me the line of being wrong. I think it was 2000. And maybe five. Okay, okay. Two thousand and five ish. So now we're in a holding area down with all the people and, and now nobody wants to talk to you, right? You Everybody your friend, <laughs> but then they see you, they don't want that boo energy. So they like, mm -mm, okay, what, 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 what? And so I'm just like, can anybody help me? Like I'm like one of them puppies trying to be saved. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, the eyes of the angel, you know, with the little big eyes Never. and shit. Nobody wanna to talk to me. So I'm like, I gotta get out of here. So one of the PAs is like, I can take you up through the side so you don't have to sit down here and be uncomfortable. As I start to walk up the theater, people start noticing who I am walking through the theater, and they start booing me again. <laughs> so much so that they had to restart the other act that was on because it was like these long boos going up the damn stairs. Oh my God! So now I'm devastated. I'm devastated. Now I just want to get the hell up out of here. I want to get. I want to get out. So now I put my coat on. I'm going outside. I remember it was snowing outside, so I had a coat and had a hood. I put this hood on, and there was another PA that was like, you know, I was just so devastated. I called my mom. I remember I had a calling card, and I called my mom on the payphone, and my mom was like, I told you not to. Go up there with them niggas and hung up. And then I was like, oh, damn. My mama don't even want me. So now I'm you sitting crying? there. I'm cr like, yes. I'm oh. like, my roommate, they came. Everybody, a bit. I had never felt so low in my life. And I'm like, <laughs> what the hell am I going to do? Like, I, I, my heart was broken. So the, this PA was there and he he saw that I was devastated. So he was like, where are you going? Where? And at the time I lived on um, 72nd between 2nd and 3rd. So I had to get off at 68th Street, Hunter College. So he was like, I'll take the train down with you to your stop wow. and make sure that you're okay. He left the Apollo and everything. Well, we were the... done. By, by that time oh, we were done. done. So okay. everybody was kind of clearing up. He was just whole... checking to see what was. So now we get on the train and he's just, he's innocently talking to me about like, what do you think happened? Because, you know, you were funny all day. You're such a sweet girl. What do you think? I said, I don't know. He says, you know, well, sometimes the crowds can be tough. And there were three dudes next to us that were like, oh, you talking about the Apollo? We just left Apollo. He's like, yeah, you know, she was on the show. And I don't think he did that maliciously. I just think in conversation. Come on. Like, no. the Come on. Come on. They, the guy pulled my hat back and said, <laughs> oh, yo, that's shorty. He was like, yo, that's shorty. And he started telling his friends. And all I remember, the guy said, you know what? Matter of fact, boo. Oh, and he man. booed me. And his boy started booing me. Other people was on the train. They, start, they started booing me so hard. <laughs> 
that people were coming on the train like, what, oh, we're going to another car. Like, That's crazy. they booed me all the way. It was still two people booing me on my way to 68th Street. That can't College. be real. That is real as I don't oh, know man. damn what. Yamanika, you don't even know what you just did to yourself. Everywhere you go after this interview. It's going to be boo. Boo! <laughs> They Boo. better not, you better not do it to me. I'm going to start carrying the gap, okay? Because I can't do Boo. it, Lord. I love a good boo story. That was, it was I'm not horrible. even going to lie to you. If you see me at your comedy show, I'm either doing one or two things. I'm either laughing hard because you hella funny or because you yeah. bombing so bad. Yeah, but you know what the thing people have to understand about comedians and comedy? And like, honest to God, I told that because I wanted to quit. After that, I was like, I can't mm. do this. It, it's nothing like, somebody feeling like people hate you. Right. That's a whole different thing. And I think sometimes... And that was before social media. Now we sure, get it every day. Now, and you get it every day. And I think people Damn. don't understand when you... When you're attacking an artist or you're hating on an artist, this is somebody that really has put their life, right? right. Like, I haven't... I haven't gotten married. I haven't had kids. You know, I dedicated my life to doing stand up. I started doing stand up when I was 16 years old. Mm -hmm. So, this is my whole life. So, now when you say you don't like me and I'm not worthy, what the hell else am I going to do? So, I was really lost. I was depressed and everything. How'd you and, bounce back? Well, I'll never forget my grandmother, who was the reason why I was the way I was in the first place. Because she's like, well, you know, you're a big girl. Let people know that you're smart and you intelligent, you know, and don't show your ass when you get up there. So I was trying to be like delicate and proud proper for people. And then she said, you know, you have to do what God told you to do. You have to be yourself. You have to show people who you are. And really inside of me, there is this prim proper woman, but there's a nigga down inside me that want to get out. And mm -hmm. I let her out. You understand? Like, I let her be free and say all the things that are in my mind. And I just want to connect with people. Not everybody has to like me. That's and that's what I've learned. Right. But the people that do like me, I hope that I get to a point where they can see me and we can fellowship together. Because that's really about exchanging your artistry. Putting those words, especially with comedy, because it's very vulnerable. I don't think a lot of people understand the depression level of comics. Like, they just think it's clowns that are going on stage, making people laugh. They're, a lot of those jokes come from pain and hurt and isolation and being in your mind mm -hmm. and some of the only times that we really get happy is when we're on stage telling our jokes. That's why they call it Tears of a Clown. I was talking to... Uh... D.L. Hughley yesterday, and D.L. was saying how he started to go to therapy, and the reason he stopped going was because it was working. And he was like, I don't <laughs> yeah. want, he was like, I don't want to lose that pain, you know what I'm saying, that trauma, because that's yeah. what makes you feel like that's what makes him funny. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm in therapy because um, really I need to be in therapy. Um, but my therapist, you know, I tell him what to do. Shout out to Alan, I love him very much. But I tell him, listen, Alan, you know what's going on. Mm -hmm. This is a black girl thing. Don't try to don't try to change it. How well, long you, know, you been? How long you know. been in therapy? Um, we've been a year now together. Yeah, it's dope. Yeah, I've been with my therapist for like a year. I change. feel clean. I feel clean. I feel, but I understand what DL is saying. Like, yeah. you don't want to lose the because we go and we talk about things that are like, you know, the problems that we're experiencing, and we don't want to lose that because we've worked it all out in the process of therapy. Right. Yeah. I think it helps. I think it helps us to explain things better. I mean, I'm not a comedian, but like it helps me to organize. You're the very chaos funny, better. though. You could be a comedian. Nah, that's too much pressure. Why? Because I don't want to get booed at the Apollo. <laughs> that's too. Have you have you went back and done the Apollo? Since I then? never go back there. <laughs> never. <laughs> never. <laughs> Fuck that log. They booed Lauren Hill, so they they they. Well, like, that wasn't late. really a booing. They booed that Neo, was so like they a... Neo too. Did they boo with or without the hat? Without the hat, he deserves to get booed. <laughs> they, boo, they, boo they don't really boo kids like that at the Apollo. <laughs> now they boo Neo. Okay, but I, I will right, say yeah. this. That's why I always respect artists who, like, I'll never try to diss somebody for their art and say that they're whack or terrible because I know it takes a lot for people to be able to put themselves out there, put out an album, get on a stage. Yeah. It's not easy. Like, even for myself, I could never do that. I sometimes have to go on stage to introduce somebody, and even that is hard for me. So imagine having to go up there and actually perform that's mm. a million times harder so that's why i always respect people that actually have the courage to do that well i really appreciate that and you know sometimes i have people who come up to me and say i think what you're doing is so hard and it's so tough and then i go you know there's something in me that mm -hmm. wants to do that that's something that god has given me and i just hope that everybody finds what god has given them and that's you know listen with my comedy, comedy is about evolution, too, not only in the material, but as a person. So the older I get, the content starts to change. And now I'm getting into this phase where I'm like, I've dealt with a lot of insecurities 
growing up. I mm-hmm. dealt with a lot of insecurities being a big woman, being a black woman, being a woman in general, um, having ideas of who I should have been and, and who I am. And that's why I'm really proud of my Netflix because mm-hmm. – Netflix gave us an opportunity to do a dirty 30. So really, this is raw material. It's very dirty. But it's very personal to me because I talk about my experience as a woman and just how awesome and dope we are as people. We just have to find what's awesome and dope about us. Mm -hmm. So it may be tough from whatever perspective of what I'm doing, but I love doing this. And I could look at you and go, yo, I don't know how you do what you do, but you do it effortlessly because that's your calling. So I just I want people to start loving themselves, start having their calling. That's what my comedy is about. It's very real. It's uncut. I you know, mm-hmm. people say how how do you feel as a Christian going up and saying certain things? I say I go on stage and I say the things that I think and I just tell you what I think because whatever the process is for me to become a better person, it's about getting out the things that are in my head, putting it out for the collective, and some of you guys might say, "Hey, I also think that way." And then how can we make ourselves better? How'd you become such a germaphobe? Are you oh, on the my... plane with the mask on? No, 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 no. I'm not really a germaphobe. Okay. This, it's, you know, th- you know, this is going to give me a lot of trouble. I just got scared the way it is. White people and Chinese people don't know how to cover their damn hands when they cough. Mm-hmm. Made their mouth, you mean? Yeah, their mouth with their yeah. hands. So I had to get a mask. So and I had to ask to... for it very aggressively. Because I think, I don't know what the man had behind me, but he was, and I'm turning around and I said, what's up? Where were you at? On the plane. I was on, on the plane. plane. On the plane. I think yeah. that's disrespectful. But now I think a lot of people experience this. Call, like, if you know you patient zero, stay your ass at home. <laughs> and they wonder why it's all these damn outbreaks on the plane. Because everybody getting up there with mucinex and tissues in their nose and stuff like that. I got to work, sir. Mm-hmm. Well, you, know you, Dr. you know what Dr. Oz said if you're ever on a plane? What did he say? He said, turn on the little the, the little. I turn those off. Cool I hate thing, that air, blowing air thing. Me. Yeah. And he said, put it on your chest. So he said, anything that comes will, will kind of blow away from what you breathe in because you breathe in from what's coming from your chest. So he said, always point that to your chest. I and know. I do that every time I'm on a plane. But you know what? That's only something that white people can do mm-hmm. because black people like heat. You know, people yeah, color with heat. I turn on that instantly. And I turn it. I get in my seat. Listen, I get there first so I can turn all the other ones off too. And I just be like, oh, it's closed. And they told us to keep it closed. <laughs> you blowing no air on me. What do I look like? Huh? Yeah, I, I don't like sick people on the plane either because there's nowhere to go. Like, cause even if I'm in an Uber or something and the guy start coughing, I roll the window down. Yeah, like you can't do that on a plane. Come yeah, but if, if your ass was sick, you still gonna catch your flight though. So what is somebody supposed to do? No, if they but get it's sick? about taking care of yourself, right? Mm-hmm. It's about <clears throat> cover your mouth though. It's definitely. doing that. You know, this is listen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you something that I talk about on stage. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm giving y'all a little tea to the pre stuff. I'm trying to be a good person, right? But being a good person sometimes does not align with, like, the reality of life. Because sometimes you got to call shit out, right? You Mm -hmm. just got to call it out. Now, I'm trying to be a good person. I go to this place. I go to this place. um, I have an audition in Times Square, which you already know is a problem because a bunch of people running through Times Square, all them tours and stuff, because they see Elsa and stuff, they think it's Disneyland. (laughs) And they don't know it's just a Mexican man in a costume waiting for a Paul Malls break, all right? So now I have a huge audition. I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to be nice and cool and have the energy of God on me. And there's a guy that has to check me in. The guy that has to check me in says next, but he's not looking at me. He's looking over here. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, what's going on? Because I'm late. You know, I'm trying to be patient or whatever with him. But he says, now he keeps saying next. I said, sir, excuse me, I'm next. He says, I'm I'm saying next. I said, yeah, but you keep looking at the lady over here. He says, I'm looking at you. I said, no, you're not. You're looking at her. He said, well, I'm cockeyed. Well, sir, what the hell are you doing here if you cockeyed? <laughs> huh? Huh? What you doing here? You should have just took his Your word job for is it. to look forward and say next, and you can't do that. I am late. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? It's like, and also, he had, I'm cockeyed. First of all, I didn't know you was cockeyed, okay? I didn't go to high school with you. You went in my yearbook looking this way. How was I supposed to know, sir? Huh? <laughs> and then the lady next to me like, oh, you're so rude. How dare you talk to him like that? Everybody deserves a job. I said, first of all, bitch, shut up. Who the hell are you? Huh? The cockeyed advocate? Mind your business, okay? <laughs> you don't know what the hell's going on over here. Yeah. I didn't say he couldn't have a job. He just don't need to work here, okay? All right? He can ref a tennis match with his eyes all over the place, but I'm busy. I'm just saying. So it's common sense. I'm still a good person, but I just got to kick it real. You understand? Absolutely. Okay, and I'm back. That's what the Apollo did to me. When we I see. got booed oh on the Apollo, God. I came out like the Hulk. I That's wish y'all could have said, now I go on stage and I go, I did. Come on, try it. Because I'm going to jump my ass <laughs> into that damn crowd. There's no camera here. There's no wall. We here. I'm here. Mike here. It can all get hot, okay? So how would you handle a booing now? I mean, I would hope, 
let's not promote this boo story. You know how crazy people are. And they're like, Charlamagne said, how bad, man? You know the best life ain't bad, bitch. No, 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 no. This ain't, this is the camera. It ain't no boo bitch time, okay? Try it if you want to. I know the Lord and I also know Thor, okay? <laughs> they gonna be in your Instagram comments. Listen, Damian <laughs> Lemon, who I love, that's my man. Oh, oh. I love him. He hates when you talk about this. I love him. That's my guy. He got <laughs> booed so bad at an April Fool's Comedy Fest in New York. I mean, bad. I mean, they. Oh, were, and that they, sucks because he's so funny. Yes, it was just it was just it bad was bad timing. timing. Yeah, right. that's all. And that's wait, wait. Let me say this, Charlie. Yeah. I'm sorry. Sometimes people don't understand. You can have a bad show. You can have a bad yeah, night. Right. Like not Absolutely. everything has to rest and fall on Absolutely. one show. You know, like give people a break. And what really, really gets my chive, honey, is when people who don't have no damn talent be telling somebody else that got some damn talent how their damn talent lies. Okay, mm. bitch, you were checking bags at CVS. Check the bags at damn CVS and let me do these damn jokes. Okay, <laughs> I only want to hear from you when I want hot fries <laughs> or to see if the um the shake machine is working at McDonald's. Now, what's wrong with them that they can never have no shake machine after midnight? I feel like they don't want niggas to have sugar after midnight because they think we gremlins and shit, right? <laughs> you go to McDonald's, they don't never have no damn shakes after midnight. Nigga, that's all we want is shakes after midnight. Turn it, who told you to turn the shake machine off? Let me see your supervisor. <laughs> Did Ronald McDonald come down here and tell you to turn the damn shake machine off? Oh That's God. the only person I need to tell you to turn, or uh, McGruff or whoever the, the fat purple one was. McGruff. Oh, what was his um, name? Grimace. 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 Well, nobody Grimace. fucked with him because he was out the way. But, you know. You My never goodness. told us why that white man head was so good. Oh, child. <laughs> You, and let me tell you something. Charlamagne, look at this white guy's head, boy. All right. <laughs> let me tell you something. Wait, 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 wait. I still disclaimer. I still love black men. But listen, you know, I didn't think he was going to be able to do anything because you know, like his. He, and no, I don't want to disrespect white guys, but like hear that white guy swag. Like, hi, everybody. Like, cheers. You know. <laughs> so now cheers. he's like, he's like, I, you know, he he did say I want to taste you though, and I was like, okay, that's. That's the thing you want to hear, okay? Okay. So he starts to go down and everything like that. And I'm like, you know, I'm like sitting there like, you know, uncomfortable. You know when you don't, you know, sometimes guys don't do it right. So you're like, ugh. I'm you not know? sure, yeah. Yeah, so he's like, he's starting to go down. I'm like, ugh, uh, uh, oh, ooh, ah. Uh. <laughs> yes! It's like my face changed. I was like, oh my God, it's the most amazing thing. You know what it was? The dedication he studied. <laughs> White guys are very studious. Mm. I think he got an encyclopedia. <laughs> you know, they like take notes. They go, you know, they black men just go it. for it. You know, but they white men go on Google, eating vagina, okay, and they take notes. And then it's like he had it all in precision. It was like an assembly line of just like, and it wasn't quick. It was like, you know, long. I don't know if it's because he was enjoying it because I have a, a big vagina. But it was, it just wasn't a few seconds. Did it you, was a long time. Did you come? A thousand percent. Did okay. he eat the butt? Did he eat the butt? Yes. Wow. Yeah. He, <laughs> he did. Yeah. He did all the bodega moves. <laughs> all the bodega moves. He just was wearing like polo at the time. <laughs> did but you he kiss did him all after? The moves. He wanted to kiss the whole time. I was surprised. He. I. I. What is this? What are we promoting? My thing. No, I can't because they're gonna think like a oh, sex. What's, no, 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 what's no, no, interesting no. about this is like what you, what you said is true because I read a book. I didn't know how to eat pussy for a long you time. You read a book too? Yeah, it's called The Ultimate Kiss. Oh. And this was like oh four. Mm -hmm. A homegirl of mine gave it to me, and she kept the rest like your head game trash. And I read that book, and that's what taught me how to properly give. What can wait. we shout her out? That's what oh, I so should wait, be you doing. You were eating your homegirl's pussy, and she told you it was trash. It was trash. And yes. book. Absolutely. Okay. And she gave you a book. It was that bad that kiss. she had to go to Barnes and Noble <laughs> and or because it wasn't just sitting there. She had to go there and order it, and then wait the two weeks, <laughs> and then gift wrap it and give it to him. That's how bad it was. Wow. But, the, but you got to study though. What you said is real. Like you got to study. That's his way of getting like, booed. Yeah, yeah, that was his way of getting booed. <laughs> <laughs> Did you return the favor to the guy? Oh yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Are you good at that? Oh. <laughs> child please she used to have a tongue ring i used to have a tongue You're ring right. i'm a big girl i you know i'm a scorpio and i and it was actually he was kept doing it mm -hmm. to the point where i was like you're not gonna ask you don't want me to go right. down on you because he just kept over and over and he was like i just want to please you i was like oh my god i've never heard that before it was very refreshing. Did you get fed up with black men? That's why you just... No, no. She had one good experience with a white man. That's this all. This came... I'm not fed up with black men. I... This was a... Uh, I, this is somebody that I came in contact with. It was very unexpected. I didn't think that I would... 
I was very shocked that mm-hmm. I was like very attracted to him. Not you know just also his energy. He was a really good guy. Right. He was um, homeless at the bus stop. <laughs> you thank you. Give me some of this. <laughs> What you got him at the bus stop. A white no, guy that was no, homeless she at a bus stop. That's my special. <laughs> Getting back to the point. Um, no, but I listen, and it was just, it's not a big deal. It's just, this is, you know, this was, a, you a know, thing. the thing. We That's just, all. you know, had a thing, and it was, uh, it was very refreshing. But I also, I think sometimes, I talk a lot about sex. It took me a long time to have sex. So it was always these things I've, I fantasized what sex was like, mm-hmm. and I think when I finally had sex, it was like, oh, this is weird, and this sounds weird, and oh, that. So, you know, I'm sort of late to the game. I'm sort of, like, a lot more shy than people would expect. I am a freak, but I'm only a freak with the guy that I'm with. I don't, I haven't done a one-night stand. I can still count really? on um, one hand using two fingers how many um, men I've been with. You know, one hand and two fingers on here, so you know that number. Mm-hmm. Um, Seven. Yeah. What and about masturbation? Wow, thank good you for the math really, lesson, young man. He can count, count pretty good over here. Are you really good at masturbating? Um, no, you don't do that. No. Okay. I think everybody should do that. I'm I'm on the road a lot. Like, I'm busy. Like, I, sometimes I don't have time to... I definitely don't have time all the time for a relationship, and I'm not going to sit there, you, you know? You toys or your fingers? Um, Goodness gracious. Damn, toys. Me. Yeah, toys. I try to use toys when I'm on the road, not at home, because I have cats that, like, you know, they're like, what's going on? I was about to say. So, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, no, because they hear the noise. So, and no, they I thought you got cats in there. Yeah, because a lot of women, I've heard, they put honey on their clit. Dad, you never heard that. And cats got a real rough that. tongue. Lying, no yes. you Cats never. got a real rough tongue. <laughs> I'm serious. You, Where have you heard that? I've heard that was, that's why they call them cat women. You, no, don't put that out there. With cats? I, no, don't put that out there. That's disgusting, and I'm gonna see about it later. But because I'm like, hmm. But no, that's cat abuse. Um, no, but yeah, I think you know I'm very into with my body, and I, I I like love my body. I think that's the thing that I also try to promote too, because I think a lot of times, especially as Big women, you get, you know, it's there's so many guys that say negative things about me, like, oh, this fat bitch, blah, 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 and how dare she think she hot, and da, da, da. But it's like, um, women at all ages, and size and stuff should appreciate being a woman and the beauty that it takes to be a woman and your body. Mm-hmm. And I'm very tuned in my, in my body and my sexiness, and I'm with guys who also appreciate my body and my sexiness, which allows me to be free. So mm-hmm. I, 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 I do love myself. I do love my, and I wish more women did and understand that you are sexy no matter what. Listen, these bitches on 600-pound life, they got niggas bringing chicken and <laughs> frying pans to their bed so they can cook dinner. <laughs> First of all, never get to the point where you that big that you got to make dinner from your bed. I don't want you making Thanksgiving dinner on your bed. I don't want my mashed potatoes to smell and taste like a comforter. You understand what I'm saying, bitch? Get up out of the bed, even if you got to have somebody take you to the grill for five seconds, just please. But there's all kinds they of women out there. They always got a man, though. They I never thought about that. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, but it's something probably there. I haven't done the research, but there's something probably there with the psyche of, like, just the letting go. Confidence of... is sexy. Yeah, absolutely. And if you have confidence, that's sexy to a man. Sure. Do you think women should be patient when it comes to, like, waiting for men to grow up and get their lives together? Like, you ever dated a mixtape rapper or something? <laughs> mixtape rapper. I probably was a mixtape rapper mm-hmm. in a relationship. Um... No, I don't believe, I mean, listen, you have to make an assessment as a woman, the value of the man, right? And how long you think it's going to take him. If you're with a guy and it's like he doesn't have his stuff together and it's not going to happen anytime soon, get rid of him. Why would you waste your life and your time? If it's meant to be, he will come around at the time that he Mm -hmm. needs to come around. Um, And I think a lot of women do wait. That's the only reason why I wouldn't promote it because women don't, I'll tell you this, in 2017, I did No Dick 2017. Really? Because I did. It was my hashtag. And the reason why I did it is because I kept dealing with the same type of fuck boy. Mm-hmm. And then I would get upset because I'm dealing with this dude. Like, and how can he do that? And then it was like, no, Yam, something is going on with you that you need to make an assessment. You need to clear men out for a second and figure out what's going on and start to learn yourself and love yourself. And through that process of a year, and actually it went on for uh, uh to up until Homeboy. The white man. Yeah, he broke it. But um, <laughs> I learned 
Like, I really learned myself. Like, I took myself to the movies. I took myself to dinner. I got massages. I was like, I want to go for a walk. I dated myself. And I realized that there was certain energy that I needed to attract because I was mm. attracting the wrong energy because right. I had the wrong energy inside me. So I think, and I think not just women, but men can do that too. I think a lot of times people get into relationships because they're empty, they're hurting, mm -hmm. and it's tough to be alone. And I can tell you as a comic who is not in a relationship, it is tough to be alone. You get by yourself and you 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 go, is this all that there's going to be? I, who, who's going to be there for me? But you got to start to learn to love that alone time mm -hmm. and learn to love that time where you're getting to know yourself because you want a person to come into your life that is going to be a part of you, but that you don't need to sustain yourself. You have mm. to be whole yourself and not think somebody else is going to complete who you are. Absolutely. Basically. Yeah. I agree with that. Well, you know, today is, uh, we've been on the radio since 6 a.m. Yes. And we're doing this thing called Change for Change today. Okay. Now, Change for Change is we're raising money. Last year, we raised over $800,000 for the uh, Gathering of Justice. And this year, we talked about it earlier. We're talking, we're doing, uh, this is more for mental illness. Okay, yes, Project yes. 375. It's a, uh, it's a, a founded by Brandon Marshall. And Brandon, Brandon Marshall was struggling with mental illness, and he was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. Yes. Oh. So we're asking people to uh, text CHANGE to 52182 to donate or yes. to uh, the website bcchangeforchange.com. We're saying all that to say we need to shake you down for a little bit of money. Okay, what do you want me to donate? Mm -hmm. Whatever you got. It, it, do I need to do it right now? Am I Vim knowing somebody? Venmo. <laughs> is it Venmo or Venmo? No, it's funny. How much you want to do? What you taking? She got to tell us. Unless she wants you want to. Do it right you want right now? You out here getting hair from white men, so I just want to know what kind of, you know, is he cutting checks? I'm getting head from white men, but, I mean, is that paying? I don't know. Is it? <laughs> That's paying? Because he owes me some money. <laughs> oh, my God. That's paying? I know. I definitely, no, I'll definitely <clears throat> donate um, okay. some yeah, money. And I can, what and is. what I could do also is if you let me know that I can promote that on my podcast as well, Word. and I can ask other comics. Yes, Absolutely. please. Because I do believe there's a lot of pro the, mental health, and especially in the, in the um, uh, people of color community, mm -hmm. we uh, often keep things to ourselves, or we're embarrassed to share, or we've been in, in this society because as a person of color, it's like you know, just do what you got to do, and nobody's really concerned about you or thinking about your well-being. We do overlook those things, and it is very important for us to make an assessment and get involved in our mental health Hell because yeah. mental health is everything. Depression and, and isolation and sadness and just any kind of in chemical imbalances, that can affect your world in such a way that, you know, if you really get help and seek help, it could change your life. It's very important. We don't focus on that enough in this world at Absolutely. all, and we're losing a lot of great dynamic people because we are not focusing on that. I agree. Absolutely. So for sure I will donate. Thank, well, you, thank you very you. much. Mm -hmm. And we appreciate you for joining us. Yes, and Thanks I just, for having me. I, I just, just get ready for all the booze that's going to be in your I'll Instagram. Stop it, no. And I'm going to send Twitter them page. all to you, honey. See, and you thought he was nice, Yamini. He now is nice, but you know he what? He's going to he gonna take you. them booze too. Okay? <laughs> well, I just think it's funny. What I would really like to happen is for you to give head to the white man and then he booze you just because. <laughs> <laughs> just to be funny. It's Yamini. Saunders, oh, give me your Twitter and stuff, oh, oh. Yamanika. Oh, yes. It's at Yamanika, Y-A-M-A-N-E-I-K-A. -A -E Thank you. And Yamanika. The Degenerates is on Netflix right now. That's yes. right. It's Yamanika Saunders. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. <laughs> 